Hello, everybody. This is Chris Whalen, CPA, and welcome to this special edition of the Street Level Business Podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking to a mortgage expert, Pinky Shah of Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation. Um, just a little bio on me for people who might not know me. I have a full service CPA firm here in New Jersey, specializing in business and individual taxes. I'm going to take a moment and just put up my contact information if anyone wants to take it down or make a note of it or pause the video. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me. As I always say, the moment you think you're bothering me, call me. Um, I'm always here to answer any quick questions for everybody, especially if you're a Pinky Shaw customer. All right, so without further ado, welcome, Pinky. Thanks for taking the time today. Thanks, Chris. I'm excited to be here talking to you today. Thanks. And the, uh, the mortgage market, of course, is linked to the crazy housing market we've had last year. So you must have been very, very busy. So I'm so glad to have you here because especially with this hot market with low inventory and uh, houses selling within a few days, um, I just wanted to get your expertise to tell my client base and networks um, and my contacts just to get a few important questions answered. So the first question is, why is it important to get pre-approved? Ooh, I love that question. <laughs> That's a good one. And um, because a lot of people don't understand why it is important. And I hear so many people say they wait until they're going to find the right house to get pre-approved, right? But if you're doing it at that point, it's too late. And I like what you just said about, you know, if uh, if you think you're bothering me, it's too late. So same concept. Right, exactly. <laughs> same concept applies is that the importance of getting a pre-approval is that it helps you understand what you can afford most importantly for yourself, right? You may think that you are, can afford a certain amount and um, you can either be selling yourself short or maybe you're overestimating one or the other, neither of which is doing you a service. So that's the most important reason. What's that, Chris? No, go ahead, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. Oh, oh, okay. So it's either that. And then the other thing is it helps you understand. So that now you're looking at homes and spending your time wisely looking at what's actually within your affordable range, right? But then secondly, it lets the seller know, because again, we're in a pretty hot seller's market right now. If you see something you like, and then you say, I'm gonna go get a pre-approval now, you may be too late because they may have offers due. They may have five offers on the property already. They have 10 offers on the property already. And if you haven't done your diligence already, then it's too late by that time. And you may not be able to get an offer in on that home. And they're going to want a pre-approval to know that you are a serious, vetted out buyer. I like to think of a pre-approval almost like a credit card. It's, you know, it's a third party verifying that you have the money that's necessary to be able to make this purchase. Right. And especially with the competitive market, everyone else that wants that house is coming with a pre-approval. So if you, don't have, if you don't have one, they won't even talk to you. The, the, the professionals, the real estate professionals that have been doing this and know how to do business are, are making sure of that as are the, uh, and, and the serious buyers know that they should do that because they're working with the professional and they're making sure they do that. So yes. Okay. The next question is, do I need to have my credit pulled to get pre-approved and can it be done with a soft credit versus hard credit? And please explain the difference. Sure. So you've been to the doctor's office, right, Chris? Yes. I'm guessing, right? And let's say you go to the doctor's office and you tell them that my elbow hurts. Um, and I think it's broken. And they say, you have to do an x-ray to figure it out. And you say, no, just tell me if it's broken without doing an x-ray. Do you think you're going to get a proper diagnosis? Absolutely not. So that's similar to why a credit report has to be pulled on a pre-approval, right? Underwriters are looking at three things when they're looking at a mortgage to see if, it, you know, to see if a buyer can get a mortgage. They're looking at their credit, they're looking at their income, and they're looking at their assets. So if a credit report is not done, then it, you could be making a mistake, a huge mistake in giving an improper diagnosis or an approval on what you actually qualify for. And uh, so that's part one to your question. Um, the second was the soft pull versus the hard pull, right? Um, a hard pull give is what is needed in order to actually lend money to somebody. So similarly, it's the whole x-ray concept, right? If we're not doing the same thing that's going to give us a proper answer, a soft pull won't give you the right information. Uh, and if you're serious about buying a home, then a, a hard inquiry is necessary for, for you to be able to know that. And it's good for four months. So if like, if someone comes to us today for pre-approval and they don't buy a home until March, we can still use that same credit yeah. report. So we don't have to do it again. And if you have great credit and you're not doing anything else to seriously hurt your credit, 
um, you know, like going out and having tons of inquiries or having late payments, then it won't really be, it shouldn't change the, the scope of where you fall on the credit scale. Fantastic. And that, that four month rule is very interesting. A lot of people don't know that. So mm -hmm. it's good to know, especially if you do get your credit pulled, hard credit pulled or any type of credit, always make sure you get a copy of that directly because it is your information, right? So just so you also have it for some other purpose in case you need it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between a pre-qual and a pre-approval? Oh, okay. So similar answer. <laughs> similar answer on this one in that a pre-qual is um, hey, Chris, you make, you tell me you make $50,000 a year and you've got 20,000 in the bank, right? And I pulled your credit and I know that your credit score is 720. So based on that, I think you can qualify for X amount, right? That's a pre-qualification. Now, Chris, let's take it to the next level though. Send me your pay stubs, send me your bank statement, send me those things and let me review all those. Make sure that the income that you told me that you make is how I would calculate it on the mortgage side, right? Um, and let me make sure that, you know, you told me you have 20,000, but maybe there's large deposits that I can't use or something like that. So let me check all of that first. And now that I've verified that paperwork, now we can say you're pre-approved. And so again, you know, sometimes we as, you know, if you're not in the industry, and if this happens again in any industry right, that you're not a part of, you think that things are going to be a certain way, but we have a lot of rules in the mortgage world that we have to follow and we have to calculate income in certain ways. So although you may actually make 50,000, that's great, but maybe you just started the job and you don't have a history of it and something, something. So I can't actually use that income or something like that, that you wouldn't, have, or maybe you didn't give yourself credit for all the overtime that I can give you credit for. So it could go either way. So that's why getting the document verification is important. And this is why I love these. I have one of me have me having these conversations with other professionals because there's all these terms thrown around and someone could be wa walking around with a pre-qual and they don't know that it's not a pre-approval. So that's why it's so important to have someone who understands these things, yeah. what you need. But this happens all the time. People think that a pre-qual is a pre-approval and they don't know. And then oh. they're behind the eight ball and when they and they go to put a bid on a house and they're behind everybody because a, a pre-approval takes longer, takes time. So, so you got to make sure you're dealing with the right person. But that's why I love talking about terms because they sound very similar, very easy they to do. think they're the same thing, but they're not. So, and you want to be yeah. armed with the pre-approval, especially in this market. Okay. Yeah. And actually that's a really good point, Chris, because a seller, right? Think about it. If you were the one selling a home, do you want someone who's come in and done extra diligence or do you want the person who took the shortest, quickest route to give you an answer, right? Of course. So they're definitely going to prefer that. And then I get, you know, a, a common objection that I hear is, well, we'll do that later. I don't want to give you all the number, you know, the paperwork. I don't want you to pull my credit. Can you just give me an idea? And the answer is yes, I can give you an idea. Your arm looks broken. <laughs> now, what are we going to do about it? Right? So so it's the same thing. Is it the right idea or is it the wrong idea? I won't know until I do all that proper workup and, and give you the proper answer so that you are served better and go in with confidence, knowing that, you know, you can truly actually buy the home and you won't have problems once you find it. Um, and Chris, I just like to, by the way, I think it's so great that you're doing this for your clients, you know, that most accountants don't go this extra mile of adding, you know, they, they, they are wonderful at accounting, but doing the extra service and really helping your clients at a broader level, which is what you're doing here, is uh, I commend you for, for thinking bigger for your client's sake. Well, 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 thanks. And it's just, it also is to show everyone thinks that you and I are, are commodities. As, like I always say, like a gallon of milk. So, you know, hopefully people see I'm different. And that's the idea here is hopefully to say, well, this is, you are what a real professional mortgage person is. You know, and you. and and so it's not the same thing. And it's like the tax people aren't all the same. So right. you really need to get like people think realtors and lawyers and mortgage people and accountants are all the same thing, taking it off the shelf when it's really not. So it's so significant even to pick your own title company, for example. People don't know they can do that. So you need the right person. You just can't take you. You have to do your homework. That's why I have someone like you on. Because you you are who you are the type of professional that people should be talking to, as opposed to who they might be talking to. So, um, and we're not all yeah. the same, and that's why I bring people like you on to say, oh, this is a person that I vetted that I feel comfortable with that my clients should talk to. So, 
It's yeah. all doing it. Believe me, it's it's good. It's good for you. It's good for me. But because I, this is a, I do this for selfish reasons, because if they go to somebody else, it's a mess. Right. And then I have then to help clean up. up so mess, right? I, I want <laughs> you to go to Pinky because I know the work she does is going to be perfect for me to review. And so it's less work for me. So it's all oh, it's yeah. all selfish reasons, but it's all good for everybody. <laughs> And, and, and the so, client so, happens to win in between, by the way, right? So that's exactly awesome. the next <laughs> question. What does it mean to be pre underwritten? Pre underwritten is a so we're in a super competitive market right now, right? And so we talked about the difference between pre qualification and pre approval, right? Being pre underwritten is like next level, basically, okay. right? That's like, I am super here, I am here, I want this house. And I'm going to do everything it takes to be able to get this house, right? So if you are really, really serious about wanting to buy a house, you go and you get pre-underwritten. And what that means is normally the way that the loan process works is that you get pre-approved and you go look for homes, you get a contract on a home, and then your formal mortgage application gets submitted to underwriting. But here at Fairway, we have something where we can actually submit it to underwriting before you find the house. So we submitted to underwriting while you're out looking for homes. And that process normally takes a couple of weeks. So we're doing what you would have done a couple of weeks worth of work later on. We put our underwriters to work early on. And now what happens is when you, you get their feedback. And so again, they're the ones that make the final decision, right? On whether or not to lend you the money. So we want that input earlier in the process. So now you have more confidence yourself as a buyer the seller has more confidence in you as a buyer. So now you have given the seller even more reason to keep make your offer stand out amongst the few that they're going to have to pick amongst, right? It's one more negotiating chip that you can have in your arsenal, right? You can say you can close faster because you've done those few weeks of work up front. So now you have, again, another, you have like another way to say, let's close faster. Here, seller, what do you want? If this is what you want, maybe I don't have to bid as high on a price now because I am looking stronger to the seller in other ways. So it gives you a way to have a better chance of getting confidence and to getting your offer accepted. And is there, is there any extra charge for that pre underwritten? And that's all part of your process. Yeah, it's all part of our process. Absolutely. And we do, we have, a, we do a consultation up front, by the way, with our clients, right? So once we pre approve, we don't just give a letter. We do a zoom meeting with our clients and we go through all the numbers with them, explain the process to them and go through all that with them. So now they can be confident out house hunting. And as long as they are confident that we are the right lender for them, right? We make sure that we are a good fit for each other. Assuming we're a good fit for each other, we should both continue to do that extra work now so that it gives them more opportunity to succeed in getting an offer accepted. I just bring that up because there might be some unscrupulous people out there with people being yeah. so desperate you know, that they might look to, to say, oh, um, a pre underwritten, uh, you know, work, the work for that might be something extra to pay. Um, and, 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 and you shouldn't be doing that. So I'm just I'm trying to say how, how was it yeah. done by someone like you professional? Um, and if someone's asking for some kind of money up front, that's out of the ordinary based on them expediting something or getting pre underwritten, well, then they should look elsewhere just or call us, you know, so I've seen that happen. Yeah. I've seen it happen. So that's why I brought up yes, that. It's not allowed problem. by the Department of Banking, but you know. <laughs> yeah. All right here. So now so so we want your tips and tricks, trick, tips and tricks or other ideas to get an offer accepted. Oh yeah. We've been doing a lot of help trying to, you know, help people get their offers accepted because at the end of the day, right? What good is a mortgage or uh, interest rate if you can't get the house that you want? So super important to work. So one of the huge trips and tips I'm gonna say first starts with working with a professional real estate agent to help you, right? So make sure you're working with somebody who is doing this as a full-time um, and they're able to help you see the right homes, help you figure out what the right price is to offer on a home. So, and then, and to have a team, right? So to have your lender and your real estate agent working together hand in hand, you've got a team that's going to be serving you. You don't have to do this alone. It's a tricky place to navigate right now. So having that professional team um, is important. And Chris and I both know some great agents so we can both certainly introduce you to folks. Um, and then, so that's step one. And then step two then is to be quick, right? As I, we mentioned before, because houses are, there's, it's a simple supply demand thing. There's just more sellers. I mean, more buyers on the market than there are sellers available, right? So, you know, they, they have the upper hand 
basically is what's happening right now. And so you've got to stand out when you're putting an offer in. Speed is one, right? So go see the house as soon as it's on the market. You can't say I'm going to go today is Tuesday and I'm going to go see it on Saturday because it may be gone by Saturday. So make sure you make it a priority if you do want to buy a home. And then when you put an offer in, again, you know, you just have to, when you run your numbers, we have a calculator that we share. And Chris, I'm happy to share it with your, your clients, um, but that people can run numbers on their own before they go see a home. And I always say, run the numbers before you go see any home. Make sure the numbers work before you go wasting your precious time to see a home and then falling in love with it only to find out that the numbers don't work for you, right? That's very disappointing. So, um, so run the numbers, make sure they work for you and run it just bidding a little bit over to make sure it works if you have to bid over on the price because that's what's happening a lot. And then um, when you put the offer in, um, try to, you know, again, make it stand out off, I'm not, I don't fully agree with waving everything in the world, right? Because that's what some, there was a point we had to do that, but I don't think that's necessary. But just putting in a strong offer and trying to understand what's important to the seller and, you know, having your agent do a little research, right? Is it important for them to close fast? Well, then that's the lever that you'll pull if that's important, right? Is closing fast. If you see that they happen to have little kids, right? You can write a letter to them and say something about, we're going to you know, raise our children in this house too. Emotion, they are people on the other end. And I think that's an important thing that folks forget because they think of it as a transaction, but it's humans and humans, right? So at the end of the day, these are folks. And so learn about them when you're in the house and you can write a letter um, and say something to them. Now, National Association of Realtors say you can't write love letters, but um, I do see it done. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so there's, you know, there's, so just figure out what's important and then work with your lender. And then we, as a lender, we call the seller's agent on your behalf. So I always have my clients say, tell me when you're putting an offer, the agent tells me when they're putting in the offer. And then I will call the seller's agent to let them know all the diligence of why this buyer is so fabulous, why they're not going to have any trouble on the mortgage side, why we can close fast and what they can expect from the experience. So now they have a strong agent. Now they have a strong lender. And so now the seller has more confidence. Um, and as a matter of fact, yesterday I spoke with a, um, a client who just had an offer accepted last week. And I spoke to the listing agent uh, because we call them every Tuesday with status updates. And I called them and, and he said, well, it was because of you. And he was very kind and called me a young lady. He said, it was because of you, young lady, that your, your offer got accepted. This offer got accepted. I had 15 offers. And I know that We've worked together before and you do a good job and I don't have to worry about this. So he said, so it happens and it makes a difference when you have a good team supporting you. Uh, so that's super important too. And then offer a higher earnest money deposit up front. And there's more, but I'll, I'll give those as a first few to get people started. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this, you know, we're in the new year. And so I get a lot of questions all the time about, you know, residential uh, property, commercial property. And, so I think we're going to, to me, uh, we still have, you know, an exodus out of the major cities. You have people who, you know, were still up in the air. They're, they're, they either left the city and rented, didn't buy yet, or they were yeah. still locked up at home. And, you know, the, uh, those high rises on the Upper East Side can really become a prison, you know, for people. So the question I get is, well, will this enthusiasm continue, right? Will the enthusiasm for single family homes outside of major metropolitan areas continue. And I, I think definitely. And so the planning tip is, well, we know May, June and July are very hot months anyway, in a normal non COVID environment. So, um, you know, don't think some people think they should wait a few months, but we're going to have a bump in enthusiasm. That's normal anyway. So I, I don't foresee that may pricing right is for the same yeah. house is going to go down compared to today. No, you know, so, so they're expecting, so, yeah, they're expecting numbers to continue to increase, maybe not at the same rate of appreciation, definitely not at the same rate of appreciation as in the past two years, but the forecast are most of the economists are forecasting that housing appreciation will continue at a, you know, soften compared to before, but certainly right, not it's depreciation. usually on average, right, about three to three and a quarter percent nationally, right, for average um, increase. Of yeah. course, we've, we've seen astronomical numbers. So, so the answer is that number one, you know, selling or buying a house should, should not be done in desperation just because of pricing. So uh, I, because if you sell high, you're going to buy high anyway. So yeah. that the idea is to still plan, you know, still, still only, only buy, only want to buy or sell based on the family need. 
because a lot of people I meet are just so nervous. They call me, they're nervous already looking for advice. And I say, that's never a position to do any bargaining with, right? If you're desperate, like I always have a motto since I'm a teenager, that desperation leads to self-compromise and leads to enslavement. So we don't want to be, we, we, we don't want to, we want it to be a strategy. Um, so, so I'm glad you agree with me and the numbers are telling me too that um, I think there's going to be a lessening of the monthly increases on average that we've seen, but you know the prices are not going to come down below the levels we're seeing today, if 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 at all. Um, and the rest of the year, you still have remember, people from all over the country have totally reevaluated living in a big city, and so the Jersey Shore is a very very nice place to be. And so I have clients that I get are coming from California, coming from Washington State, so. <clears throat> Monmouth and Ocean County are sort of this little jewel on the East Coast, and we know that, right? So, just so that that's my final word on it from me about if you if you want to buy a house, we need to go buy a house. If you need it for your family, it shouldn't be. Don't think of anything to do with pricing. That pricing is the is the, is the secondary to. It's not like buying an investment property. You agree? <clears throat> I agree. Yeah, it's a, it's a, cons there's a consumption, right? That, that, that happens when you're using a home, you're paying rent right now, if you are, if you're renting. So that's money you're throwing out and getting nothing back in return for. So it's, and, and you're actually using the property. It's not just like you're, you know, buying it right. for investment, as you said. Right. So definitely, you know, and, and Chris, then the other part is once you, you know, from an accounting perspective, right, I'm sure you've got, it's, a, it's, you can when you when you bought a house, make sure you get this um, document called closing disclosure at the end of it. When it's they call it a settlement statement, and you're required by law to get it three days prior to closing. So um, typically, we make sure that our clients have re received that and make sure they send it to their accountants definitely before they file their taxes because there's some tax benefits and stuff that they can get and. Obviously, you as the professional know how to guide them on that, right? But I know that you actually even ask your clients to take a look at it while they're in the process, right? Because again, you go above and beyond um, what other accounts do, and you, you really are serving your clients at a higher level. Well, so. if you think if you think about it, it's a it's a tax related, very significant transaction. All right, so of course the CPA should look at it before you sign it. So yeah. that's why I tell them it's a. Um, we find errors, we find mistakes, but it's also part of tax planning. And like I said, we have, there's things on the closing disclosure that we can deduct. So I always get it when you, when, when the client gets a, a draft of it, so I could take a look at it to make sure my eyes are on it. And I don't, I don't see something that's from my tax perspective out of whack. And for some people who haven't closed on a house in a few years, right, it used to be called the HUD one, right? So the HUD one is now the same as a closing disclosure. Um, they they change rules and title agent rules and things like that. So um, if you don't know what a closing disclosure is, it's just the HUD one statement. If you know what that is, just with two columns, buyer seller, and the reconciliation of the deal down to due to or from uh, the borrower and things like that. But it's just it's the same thing. It's just a different name, right? Yes, yeah. yeah Check me. I uh, you're you know that better than me. All right. Well, yeah. I pre well picky shy. I appreciate it. Please take take a minute and tell everyone how they can reach you. Oh, sure. Um, so I'm like, the, my phone number is 732-845-1991. And our website is pretty simple. It's pinky, P-I-N-K-Y, mortgage.com. And uh, the email is team at pinky mortgage.com. And we've got a few things that, you know, we're happy to help anyone understand what it's like to buy a home. And oh, thank you. <laughs> so we, we're happy to help understand you don't have to call us just the moment you're ready. We do, we have plenty of folks prepare to buy a home too, because I think that upfront education and getting yourself into the right place, just as Chris said, before desperation, and, and so that you're feeling really satisfied and happy with your purchase is super important. And we want to make sure we help people make smart decisions. Okay. Well, thanks very much, Pinky. I Thanks everyone for listening and watching. If you made it this far, I'm just going to put up my information again as I sign off here. And um, yeah, but thanks very much. Remember the moment that the 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 a, a mortgage question or anything comes up at all at any time you should be calling Pinky about it, even if you're not in the market for a house right now. So, Absolutely. like we, her and I agree. The more as opposed to other professionals, I don't want you afraid and I want you educated. 
A lot of accounts like people afraid. They want people to rely on them too much. So I want you educated. I get calls every day from people that don't, I don't even do their taxes just to get a clarification. And I love to do that. So, so we, neither of us mind getting a call, even if you're not a current client, because we want to be the place to come for expert advice at all times. Right, Pinky? Absolutely. Yeah. It's one of the things I like about you, Chris. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody. And um, I look forward to tax season's here. So don't forget when you drop off your taxes, we accept donuts and you know, candy, you know, lasagna, whatever you'd like to bring us while we're working hard. Thanks, Pinky. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.